What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel guys. We are about to mount the turbos. Now where we left off in the last video is we were just about to mount the turbos. So that's what we're going to do now. So we got the turbos mounted and just look at those beauties right there. They look so good sitting there. Look at them. All right, so we got the turbos mounted. We got the all the code piping for both sides ran going to the intercooler. And really quick, right here is a really deep bend right here, pretty much like a 135 degree, 120, I believe it's a 135 degree uh, elbow coupler. It goes right here and it's tucked right there but i can bring this down a little further but it will get really close to the k member right now we're clearing the k member so we're good but guys we are getting there it's starting to come together uh what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna lower the car down we're gonna put the injectors in and the intake manifold on so i can route all the charge piping then when we're done with the charge piping and stuff like that i will come back down here and we are going to put the rest of the uh down pipe and the rest of the exhaust on the car and get everything down here done and then get my coolant lines plumbed to the turbos uh along with that with some vacuum lines and wastegates of course i have to put the wastegates on first all right guys we will be putting in this fuel pump it is a uh f90000 285 ti automotive fuel pump that is the Hellcat fuel pump, which is a 525 LPH. When I cross that number, that's what it comes out to. 525 LPH fuel pump. So that's what we'll be putting in there for right now until we go E85. And then we will be going with a return fuel system. I'm not sure which one. I'm looking at four right now. I really like the four system. Uh, but guys, that's pretty much what we're doing. We're going to lower the car down. We're going to get the intake manifold on with the injectors. We, and we are using the FIC. 1000 injectors in the car so we're going to use those but get the car down put the intake and the fuel injectors in and then get the charge pipe ran uh, get the blow off valve installed and then we'll come back down here and start hitting that up So we had the turbos mounted, we had the wastegates mounted, we had the wastegate dumps mounted, we have the down pipes mounted, we have the mid pipes mounted, and we have the exhaust on. And guys, just look at that view right there. 
Mm, looks so good. All right, guys, really quick. I told you guys that if I did anything different over here that I was contemplating it. If I did anything different, then I would show you guys. So what we did is we rotated the turbo up further, more in the two-ish, three-ish o'clock position. And then we rotated this coupler down. We moved this to where it's kind of coming straight up into that. And then that's pretty much all we've done over here as far as anything that's changed. As you can see, we have the, the vacuum fittings on the wastegate. Now, I want to show you guys something that's very, very important about the wastegate. Uh, is right here this is the top of the wastegate and this is the bottom of the wastegate i know it's upside down but when i refer to top this is the top and this is the bottom port top port bottom port so the bottom port always goes to manifold pressure some people actually take this part right here right here and there will be a fitting right here and it will go to here and then this will go to, to a boost controller so but anyway guys what we're doing is we're going to go manifold pressure right here and then that will always be completely manifold pressure this right here is only if you're using a boost controller if you're not using a boost controller you'll just leave this vented to atmosphere so it'll be vented to atmosphere and you will only run wastegate spring pressure only but we're going to be using go fast bits boost controller so we're going to be hooking up the solenoid to that controller to this line so we have manifold pressure going to this line and then this line will be coming from the solenoid for the boost controller but we'll get into that more as we run the vacuum lines also guys i got to run the coolant lines and that's what we're about to do now is run the coolant lines all right so real quick i'm going to show you the how we're going to run the coolant lines so this right here is a restrictor so we're going to have to take that restrictor and we're going to have to cut this cut this clamp off and move the restrictor down here it needs to be at about uh, a couple inches or oh, at least two to three inches away from the t okay that is for the heater core it needs to be here we don't need to be restricting it to the turbos so we're going to cut the line move this down and then we're going to put the t in and that t is going to drop down and it's going to drop straight through this hole right here uh let me see that hole right there and then what that's going to do is that's going to come down from there and it's going to come behind here come out and go straight into the turbo right there so that it's a straight shot and then we'll go out of that turbo into the next turbo out of that turbo which is right there and then we're going to bring it and we're going to come up straight through here and into this hole and then we're going to bring it up here and tee it right back into this hose very simple setup uh there's some other ways that people have done it on other turbo kits but this one you got you got this hose flowing so you got all the coolant pressure you're going to need to flow through those turbos and that's the way that Hellhorse recommends doing it so that's the way we're going to do it all right guys, so let's get started. So we got the coolant lines ran as you can see we took that clamp off that was holding the valve that's right here up here as you can see right there in the ditching took that off cut right here we moved it out we moved it down here we put a clamp back on so it wouldn't get pushed further into this hose as time goes on so right there 
You don't have to get it very tight, just enough to hold it right there. Once you do that, then you put the T in, you're going to put the clamps on. Now, you don't have to get these killer tight because you can mess up that plastic uh, T right there. You don't have to get them killer tight, but uh, you just get them tight enough where they won't leak. And then you put, we put this hose on, then we run it through here like I talked about earlier. And then out there, down, through there, and then into the turbo. Then on the other side, on, in the middle we go from turbo to turbo, and then on this side we come out of the turbo, up through here, up under this plate right here, through here, through a hole down here. We come up through here, and then into this T that we place right here in this heater hose. Uh, very, very easy setup. Uh, just take your time and run the hose. All right, really quick, I want to show you what we just got done here. What I did was I came down here and I ran my vacuum lines that go to the wastegate. Now, on both sides, all I've done is run the vacuum lines that go to manifold pressure. The boost controller lines go right here, so as to not get confused and not make sure I don't make a mistake, we have ran only these over here. To, I don't know if you can see that up in there. Let me shine some light right there. So that goes to the bottom of the wastegates on both sides. So I decided to put my vacuum block right here. Since my car is not a performance pack, so I don't have that extra brace right here. So I decided to put my vacuum block right here, and I'm running everything along here. Now, this right here is the passenger side wastegate. And this right here is a driver's side wastegate. And what I did is I ran them both down through here. And then right down through that hole right there, I ran and down through there with my water line, I ran the vacuum line going to the driver's side wastegate. And on the passenger side, I ran the same way, except I kicked up right here, ran along here. And then I go down and down the bell housing area and then into it. So kind of keep it away from the most heat. But this looks like a mess right here, but I'm going to clean all this up. As you can see, I've already cut the line off of that. We're going to be taking this, and we're going to be going over here. We'll run down through here. We'll run out through here. I'm going to run over. I'm going to jump over, come over here, and then come up into here. So I'm trying to keep it everything really, really nice and neat. All right, guys, so that's what we're doing, and uh, I'm just going to keep trucking. Alright, so we got everything together in the car and we are ready to fire it up. I just got my tune this morning. We got everything done last night. And the tune is here this morning and we are supposed to be at the dyno today. So, a uh, really quick rundown on the vacuum setup is this is passenger side wastegate bottom, driver side wastegate bottom. This goes to the boost controller solenoid, which is right here. And then this comes in right here, goes out, goes down into a T, splits off, goes to the top ports on the waste gates. And then this right here goes to the blow off valve and that thing is almost hidden. It's almost a shame that it's hidden like that. Uh, but anyway guys, we got everything done. We got the breathers on. Uh, I'm probably gonna go to a catch cam before long for that over here or somewhere. But uh, we're about to put the tune in and fire it up check for leaks and then 
uh, give it a heat cycle, check everything, and then we're headed off to the dyno. So, but the dyno will be another video. All right, guys. So now we are in the guys. That's where we. That's the Go Fast Bits boost controller. But we're not gonna mess with that right now until we get ready to put it on dyno and turn it up. So, read. I'm gonna get all these tunes off. Well, there we go. Once I load this tune in and we start it up, I'll go in and get all the rest of the tunes off. All right, guys, so I'm not gonna make you guys wait for this. We'll pick it up when we're about to start the car up. All right, guys, here goes nothing. So you just seen the first startup and uh, everything's looking good so far, guys. Uh, right now I'm trying to burp the coolant. Uh, once the coolant is burped and it's warmed up, I'll be able to get a log. And then we'll be headed to the dyno. Like I said, that will be the dyno will be in the next video, guys. Uh, we are on 93. We are not going with a additive because I want to have it tuned with the fuel that I'll be running all the time, the Shell 93 without an additive in it. We're not gonna go extremely crazy. We're gonna data log. Rob's gonna be reviewing the logs while it's on the dyno. So if he says it looks good, we're good. If he says back off, we're done, that's it. But uh, that will be in the next video. And I know you guys are excited. I'm excited. Uh, it's been a long process. COVID threw a bunch of monkey wrenches in this build. Uh, stuff went on back order it was just crazy so uh if you're planning on doing a build right now order way ahead of time and get all your stuff in because i'm telling you it's crazy right now with how much stuff is not in stock i cannot even get my mickey thompson et street r's to go drag racing right now that sucks my other drag wheels i sold to uh boosted 931 so uh, I didn't plan on having this issue of not being able to get the ET Street R's again. So now I'm facing this issue. So we are going to get some tire to go to the track. I'll figure it out. I always do. We're going to the drag strip in this thing as soon as I can. I've been away way too long from the drag strip.